In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make your very own unique worm harness. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is the lure that we're gonna be creating today. This is the worm harness that we're creating. It has some red, black, a little bit of chartreuse. Let's see that clear. And then this is the blade that we're gonna be using. And then at the end of that, we put the red hook. Now I already created this a couple weeks ago and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create it. It has a swivel up front and then it also has a clamp to kind of hold that down. So I'll be showing you guys how to do this. All right, so I'll set this aside. The tools that we're gonna be needing to create this is mainly gonna be this right here. This uh, plier is gonna be used to kind of clamp that, uh, that swivel in place and lock everything in how we need to. Um, but that's pretty much it for the, the tools. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the materials. We have some of the beads right here. We've gotten these, I'm not sure where we got these from, but what I did is I put them all in here and I got these other ones in here as well. These beads, I'm not sure where I got these from, 635 pieces, so it's a lot. So here are some of the blades that I have. It's a lot of different blades that you can um, use for your, your worm harness and make it unique to you. You can mix and match them if you like. Um, I got these from Gander Supply a while back when they were open. Um, now you can probably go on Amazon and find different blades to use. Um, but like I said, you could come up with any combination you want and make that work for you. What I'm also using as my main kind of cord for, for my uh, worm harness is this nylon coated wire. Now, I believe I did get this from Gander Mountain as well. This one is Berkeley 20 pound test. And I'll show you how I'll be using that as well. And then I already have some hooks that I have separated in here, but these are the treble hooks that I use. This is a size four. When I do put treble hooks on, and I also have this size two, it's kind of a bronze color uh, shank hook. Red larger hook is a size one. It's another plain shank. And then this I found randomly. I'm not sure how I did, but it's aluminum, so I know it will not rust. But what I use is the cap off of that, and I'll show you how I'll take that off, and I will use that to kind of clamp my swivel in place. Also, what we have in here is we have kind of a, a small little uh, ring hook, and we have our swivel. And I'll show you how I'll be using both of these as well. And then we also have the variations. We have a, a kind of a gold color, um, what we use to put the blades on. And I'll show you how I'll be using that. And then we have a silver one as well. And I'll show you how I'll be using that. All right, so let me go ahead and get the beads. Like I said, we're gonna be creating, we're gonna be creating this one with this. So I'm gonna find the blades that I need, the bead colors that I need to go with this. All right. So this is what we're gonna be creating. We've used this a couple of times on Lake Erie. We have red, black, chartreuse, and then a little bit of this uh, was kind of a clear color. It's a nice blade, gives the same colors in there, which I really like, and then it has the hammered back on there. That gives a good sparkle when it's going through the water. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my uh, things that I'm gonna be using up here. So I'm gonna find my blades. So I have these are the blades that I'm gonna be using, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get, I already got some of these colors. All right, now that we got this clipped, we got a nice clean edge. We can go ahead and start from the front and then work our way back, starting to put these beads on. I'm not sure if you can see how I line these up, but I line these up in the order that I wanted those to go down the line. And then if you can imagine it, the hooks will be down here. The trailing hooks will be on this side and this will be the front of it. The lure will be going that way. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started with these. Now remember guys, you can make this any way you want. Any colors that you desire, you can put on there and make them how you want to make them. Just make sure that when you're making them, keep in mind the spacing between these blades. See, I have all these beads. I'm not sure how many that is, but if the spacing is off, then it's not gonna swim right. So you gotta make sure that you have the spacing appropriate for that. 
All right, so the other thing is I told you about how we would put the blade on. Now you can't just put the blade on like this. You can't do that. What you need to do is you need to actually use this right here. And I know it's hard to see on, on here, but what that's gonna do, you, you hoop it through here and then you need to actually pull this through like this. And it needs to fall a certain way. The color of this blade needs to be on the outside. You see how I put that on there like that? And then that falls down. I'll show you like this. This needs to be on the, the outside. If the lure is like this, this needs to be on the outside. If you have it where this side, this hammered side is showing on this side like this, because that needs to be like that. Where Everywhere around it goes, that's going to be on the outside. It shouldn't be the other way. So make sure you have this on the right way. And everything, like I said, is really simple. Then it's pretty much just putting beads on the string. And uh, everyone knows how to do that. So pretty simple. You follow the order that you uh, put forth. Now the reason that I chose these colors is because it matched the color of that spoon. That, you don't have to do that every time. This is my first time actually doing that and it actually seems like it's working out pretty fine. Another thing that you may want to consider doing as well is when you're putting the, the beads that's next to this blade, make sure you try to put a small bead. If you put a bead that's too big in size, what can happen is this may not swim like it's supposed to. So make sure you get a bead and I'll show you that all these beads have different sizes to them. So like this one right here, for instance, this is a larger bead. So having that one next to that blade may affect the way that swims. So I usually like to put one of these smaller beads like this next to, right next to the uh, blade so that way it wouldn't affect any of that swimming. That action that you get in the water can play a role in how that blade flickers. And that can be the game changer of whether you're attracting the fish or not. All right, so now I have all of the beads and the blades on, and this is how we're currently looking, guys. Now that looks fire. That looks like something that's gonna go out there and catch some fish. Now, at the end of this, I'm gonna go ahead and actually add my hook by bending this up, and then I'll show you how to do it so that way I can put my swivel on. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll keep a lot of slack in this. So what I'll, what I'll do is, I bend this like this, give that a bend, and then I'll just loop this around and then put that through. Since this is the wire line, it's not as easy, but it's not, it's not too bad. And try to make it where you'll get like a small loop. You don't want a huge loop to put that in. And then I'll go ahead and tighten this up just like that. Tighten it and get a nice, nice knot. This 20 pound test wire line makes it really, really easy. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the ring to actually put through this little hoop right here. And this is the same thing that you use to put keys on, but a lot smaller. Here we go, see it's not too bad. Getting that through there. So we are going to get our trailing hook Start it. So we're going to take this, wrap this around like this. Go ahead and put this through here. Now we have our loop. And then we're going to get this tightened. And that wasn't too bad on there. And now you got a loop. Now this loop is bigger, but it's okay because it's the trailing hook one. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So now, since we have this, I'm going to go ahead and get our ring. And now we have those on there like that. So I'm going to start by putting one of these smaller red hooks on here. And that's going to be for this first hook. And then the trailing hook, I'm going to go ahead and put this larger one on. So get that one on in a second. First, let's get this one on. There we go. Now I chose to use this red one. You could have used any of those other 
hooks that I have, or you can have any a different kind. I have that treble hook I could have used. A lot of times what I'll end up doing is putting the treble hook as my trailing hook. Sometimes they're hard to deal with when you're out there. And I know I need to get a new net. Someone told me that already and that's in my plan. So I'm looking forward to getting a new net. But those treble hooks can get caught up all over the place. All right, so now I have this bigger red hook that's gonna go on for this trailing one. And that's how that one is. So we're not done yet. So these are how the hooks are gonna be on here. We'll put the worms on like that. So we still have to clip this and then we still have to add the swivels on. So I'm gonna go ahead and then clip this line. Get rid of that excess. And this is how our new lure is looking so far. And I still gotta get the swivel on there. Looking pretty good, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip it. I can clip it up here and give a little access. And then I make sure I hold on to this so that make sure that all these <laughs> beads and then the blades don't come off. So how we're gonna have this, we're gonna go ahead and get our swivel and put this on. So that's gonna be like that. Got this swivel right here. That makes sure that it doesn't get twisted or anything like that. Uh, but before we do this, there's another thing that we need to do. So one thing is, I showed you this earlier on. Now this was so random. I was trying this before and I have this. I don't know what they call it. Short rivets. I don't know. I don't know exactly where I even got this from, but this top part actually comes off and how I get it off is I'll put this right here and then try to just push this on through to get this to to come off. Let's see if I push it up against here without damaging. There we go. So I'm pushing this just down and what it leaves me with is this right here. <clears throat> this is what I'm looking for right here. And it's gonna kind of be work as my clamp. And see it has a hole that goes all the way through. All right, so I'm gonna have this be my clamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and poke this through right like this. See how I poke that through. And then I'm gonna put the swivel on. That's gonna be the swivel part for that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have this go back through And then this, the swivel part is gonna be right here. And that's what I'm gonna attach my line to. So what I need to do now, now that I got this pulled through, is I need to go ahead, I'm gonna twist this just so it's kind of twisted in there. Try to hold that still and I'm gonna clamp down on that. And me clamping down on that is gonna make this kind of all lock in place. So I'm gonna try to hold this like this I already have it twisted and then I'm going to use this tool, the pliers, go ahead and just clamp down on it real hard. And that clamping down on that is going to really lock that in place. I'm going to clamp down on all of it. And then I don't have to worry about, see that's really tight, tight seal on that. And the fish won't pull that out should stay in place really really well just clamping that down now I know there's a lot of other ways that you can be making these lures people do them any way they can basically this is the way I do it I'm not saying that my way is the best or the perfect way this is just the way that I do it and I'll go ahead and clamp this off and it's worked fine for me I tried other ways before and it's worked but here we go this is our final product I showed you how to attach a worm to these as well. You're gonna put the top part right here, have that come down. You got another trailing hook that's down here. So you're gonna hook this one right down there like that. And then it's gonna look like that. So when that's swimming through the water, it's gonna be twirling like that. The fish are gonna come behind it and grab it, get caught up on those hooks. And that's how you actually make a worm harness. So, Appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment, subscribe. 
and always keep fishing. Let's go.